APCO Educational Topic Number 3, Pap Smear and DNA Probes in Culture. Worldwide, cervical cancer is the fifth leading cause of cancer and the fourth leading cause of cancer deaths among women. In the United States, the incidence of cervical cancer has decreased by 50% over the last 30 years due to increased technology and availability of cervical cancer screening. The PAP test is one of the most effective screening tests used in medicine today. The objectives of this video are to describe how to perform a PAP smear or PAP test, describe how to obtain specimens to test for sexually transmitted diseases, and lastly, to be able to explain the purpose of these tests to patients. The pap smear or pap test is named after Dr. Georgios Papandreou, a Greek physician and cytologist who discovered that cancer could be diagnosed from microscopic cell changes. His image was featured here on the Greek currency. Let's spend a day in clinic with our gynecologist, Dr. Testia de Papi. Dr. Papi is performing a pelvic examination on a patient, and here is the patient's cervix. Dr. Papi will use the endocervical brush and gynecologic spatula to obtain cells from the transformation zone of the cervix. There are two different techniques for PAP processing. If liquid cytology techniques are used, the cells will be collected in a liquid preservative. If conventional methods are used, the cells will be transferred directly to a slide. The cell samples will be stained in a laboratory and read by a pathologist for changes associated with cervical dysplasia or cervical cancer. Contaminating blood, discharge, and lubrication can interfere with specimen interpretation. If water-based lubrication is used during the speculum examination, it is important to minimize the amount of contact the lubricant has with the cervix. An advantage of liquid-based testing is that the same sample can be used for the PAP test, HPV-PCR, and gonorrhea and chlamydia testing. Although gonorrhea and chlamydia testing can be performed from the liquid cytology, the first-line test is nucleic acid amplification testing. This is a separate swab of the endocervix. If a patient is not having a pelvic examination performed, then the nucleic acid amplification test can be performed from a urine sample. Of note, this is not a clean catch urine, but rather a first catch urine sample. So which patient should get tested? When and for what? Let's review some case files from a day in clinic with Dr. Poppy. Our first patient is Idonta Nita, a 19-year-old gravid zero here for her first gynecologic visit. I am 19 years old and have been sexually active since age 16. Idonta will not need a pap test until age 21, regardless of when she first became sexually active. It is important to discuss contraception and to screen for sexually transmitted infections. Women under age 25 should have gonorrhea and chlamydia testing at least once a year. The human papillomavirus, or HPV, is commonly contracted by women shortly after initiation of sexual intercourse. In most women, the infection is transient and does not progress to cervical cancer. We do not screen for HPV in women under the age of 30 because of those two reasons and in order to decrease unnecessary interventions. Our second patient is Justa One, a 25-year-old Gravita One Pair One here for her annual examination. I had a normal pap test three years ago during my pregnancy. Women ages 21 to 30 should have a pap test with cytology only every three years. Since her last pap test was three years ago, she is due for one today. Our next patient is HPV2, a 50-year-old Gravita 2 para 1 coming in for an annual examination. I have had normal pap tests my whole life. Women between the ages of 30 and 65 should have a pap test with HPV co-testing every 5 years or a pap test with cytology alone every 3 years. Remember that even though the pap test is no longer an annual examination, it is still important to regularly perform a bimanual examination and visual examination of the external genitalia regularly. Our last patient is Nonita Pap, a 68-year-old Gravita 2 Para 2 here for her annual examination. I had a hysterectomy and have no history of abnormal Pap tests. Women over the age of 65 or women who've had a total hysterectomy no longer need cervical cancer screening and will not need Pap tests and or HPV. This concludes the APCO video on Pap smears and DNA probes. We've discussed the function of the Pap test, general testing guidelines, and methods for obtaining samples.